uh, Wagner Landgraf. Uh, I also know uh, Wang, uh, Wagner, let's say maybe a lot of years, we even uh, led uh, uh, different uh, online events together. Uh, Wagner is a CEO at Landgraf Dev, software developer, TMS software partner, and more, more and more. Hi, Wagner. Hi Sergey. Hi everyone. Hi Andrea. Let me try to share my my cam as well. Yeah, and today uh, Wagner's subject uh, will okay. be how to use uh, GWT when authorizing uh, 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 using uh, let's say uh, in Delft using REST API. Uh, why is this subject? Because uh, let's say we got a lot of um, requests from the developers which ask it us uh, to uh, uh, share uh, this experience and explain real example of uh, how to do it. Let's talk about JSON Web Tokens. I am Wagner Landgraf. In summary, I work with development for more than 25 years, helping developers, especially with Delphi. And I'm the author of several libraries for Delphi, like TMS Aurelius, which is ORM, TMS X Data, REST, and some of them uh, use JSON Web Token. I work together with TMS Software, and our mission is, again, to develop products and solutions to help developers to better develop their software. So let's talk about JSON Web Token. Uh, JSON Web Token is also pronounced JOT. So I can, sometimes I, I will speak here JSON Web Token or JOT and JWT because of the abbreviation JWT. And a JSON Web Token is a standard that represents claims in a safe way. This is, a, of course, I will enter into details, practical details right now. This is a concept definition, which means JSON Web Token is something that holds information that we call claims that you can trust and claims is, hey, Joe, I have this information. I am Joe. I was born this at this date. And all this information is true because there is a signature in the JS Web token that makes it sure that you can trust it. Given a more practical definition or a more practical approach to it, a JSON Web token is a string, all right? And is a string, the standard defines it as as a string with three sessions separated by dots. So you have the first section represented here in red is a string dot, a second session, section in green, again a dot, and the C section in blue. And below is a real example of uh, what a JSON Web Token is. It's a string that looks like that. It's just a bunch of uh, base 64 encoded strings separated by dots. And we can now understand better what are these dots. The middle part of the JSON Web Token separated by the, the section, which is separated by dots. The, the second session is called the payload. And the first section is called the header. And the third section is called the signature. The payload is simply a JSON uh, encoded as base64. It's just if you get the payload and decode it as base64, you get a JSON. For example, a JSON with two properties, a proper name with uh, the content Wagner and a proper admin with uh, the content true. And the first section is the header, which is also a JSON encoded in base64. But this header, it's you can understand it more, more as metadata of the JSON Web Token. So the payload is the information that they want it to hold, and the header is a kind of metadata, which uh, contains some predefined properties in the JSON. For example, the most uh, used ones are Alg, which means the algorithm for the signature and type, which is JSON Web Token. And finally, 
the last section is the signature of the JSON Web Token, which can be several types. If, if you go back to the header here, you see that this JSON Web Token has a signature uh, created with the algorithm HS256, which is a, uh, a predefined uh, name for this, for this method of signature, which is this one, which is a uh, hate Mac uh, encoding using S8A256. And it's an algorithm that you can use to uh, sign the JSON Web Token and make sure that that signature, the JSON Web Token, the signature can only be generated by those who have a secret. So this is a cryptographic function, which will not enter into details here, but it takes into account the content of the header and the payload and a secret, which will generate the signature. And this makes sure, makes sure that when you read, when someone is reading the JSON Web Token, it can, if you have the secret in the, in the case of this algorithm, you can get the signature of the JSON Web Token and check if that signature was generated using that secret. Uh, someone without the secret uh, mathematically, we'll never be able to generate a signature uh, like that. And since the signature takes into account the header and the payload, if something changes in the payload, the signature is not valid anymore. So that's why that's how you guarantee that the JSON Web Token is valid and can be trusted. There is a website which is jwt.io or jot.io which uh, is a very nice place to play with uh, json web tokens and i'm going to show it right now so this is the website jsonwebtoken.io and here is the the playground that you can use to understand better what a json web code is so here is the in red the header and in purple the payload and in blue the signature so for example if i change name by pay attention when i change here pay attention to the purple and blue part if i change wagner you see that the purple part changes because it's the base 64 encoding and the blue part changes because this it's recalculating the signature based on the secret. This is the secret if I change to my secret, for example. So it calculates a different signature. Okay. And if I change, if I, if on the other hand, if I change here, the token here, it updates here. So if I change the signature, it will say that the signature is invalid. So the idea of the JSON Web Token is when I read this, that you send this, once the JSON Web Token is generated like this, you can send it wherever you want and whoever reads this reads this token can decode this part and check the signature if the signature doesn't match the the token must be rejected if it matches the token can be sure to be trusted so you don't have to you can the the token is self-contained because i'm pretty sure that the name is wagner because if someone changes this part here, it has to change, he has to change the signature as well. Otherwise the token will be rejected. So you can't, you can't change the content without changing the signature. And to change the signature, you need to know the secrets. So only the parts with the secret will be able to generate and read the JSON Web Token. So regarding JSON Web Token, it's self-contained. All needed information is there. It's just a string. You can use it with any uh, development platform you have, including Delphi. And since it's a string and in, encoded in Base64, it can be sent in URL, in curl strings, in cookies, HTTP header. So it's very easy to transfer JSWeb token here and there. For Delphi, there is a great open source 
JSWeb Token Delphi framework, which is Delphi, Jose, and Jot library. The URL is here. You can Google for Delphi, JSWeb Token for Delphi, GitHub, and it will be there. Or also add Paolo Rossi, which is the author of this library, to your Google, and you'll find it there. It's very easy and straightforward to use it. And to use JSON Web Tokens, very use it for authentication. So here are some pros compared to cookies is that when you use JSON Web Token, it's stateless and scalable because you don't have to check for a database if that string is valid or something. The JSON Web Token is self contained. It is decoupled. You can generate your JSON Web Token in one server and use it in another server. There's, those servers don't have to be connected. Anyhow, it works fine with cross-domain and course. It's also because it's self-contained, it's performant because you just read the string processes and that's it. Because of that, it's very useful also for mobile and internet of things. And some things you have to pay attention when using JSON Web Tokens is the token size because all the information you need is inside the token itself. So if you add too, much, too many information, the token size will explode, so be careful with that. You will always have to check for expiration of the JSON Web Token. You have to include an expiration because once you generate a, web, a JSON Web Token and you sign it, it's valid forever. So you cannot, uh, how can you say, you cannot uh, invalidate a token. So it's always safe, it's always a good practice to include in the JSON Web Token payload, an expiration date, so you make sure that that token cannot be used after that date. Also, make sure you solid, it. Make sure you uh, you don't have sensitive information in the payload because anyone can read that information, even if the token is invalid. If the signature is not valid, the payload can be decoded and read. So make sure you. Only use try to only use OPEC information in the token and not sensitive information. And of course, when you read a token, you have to save it somewhere. So make sure you save the token in a safe way. This is basic recommendation for anything related to authentication and authorization. Here is an example of the usual authentication using, using cookies, the between codes old way. So the browser sends a username and password to log in to a server, for example. And sorry, it's in Portuguese, but it's, you get the idea. The server checks if the user is valid, the password is valid, and creates a session in the server. It's in memory or in database, it doesn't matter, and returns the session ID in a cookie. And then when the web application continues to work, it just requests data to the server passing the session ID. And the server, you have to check the session ID, go to the database or in memory and check if that session ID is valid. And then based it on the information gathered from the database, get the user and the permissions that the, the user have has all based on the session ID and returns to the client. When you use JSON Web Token, it's slightly different because the user sends the username and password. The ID is the same. Check if the user and password is valid. It's, it's a valid authenticate the user and creates the JSON Web Token and returns it uh, in any way that you can choose. And then the web application sends authenticates the requests passing the JSON Web Token, usually in the authorization header. The difference here is that you don't have a session ID. You don't have to check in the database for created sessions to see when the user, which is, is the user of the request. Is You just have to validate the token. The token is self-contained. So the token might have information like the username or the permissions that the user has or any other needed information for the server. The server just validates the token. The signature checks if the server generates, the server itself generates the token and returns to OK. And this way you can have 
is a way to scale, for example, something that is harder to do with a session ID, you can have different servers. One server for generating the authenticating the user and generating the token and the application server which checks if the token is valid because the JSON web token is self-contained. You can do this easily. So you can have, this is just a different word in here, you can have a server for authentication. And of course, client side, you can have the client can be a browser, but can also be a desktop or mobile application. So you don't have to deal with cookies, which is uh, very web application specific. With JSON Web Tokens, you can have your JSON, save it and use it from desktop or mobile applications with a single authentication server. So let me try to be very quick here and show uh, the, an example with Delphi using JSON Web Token. In this example, we will use TMS Sphinx, which is a TMS software framework for creating authentication server. And we also have an API server. The example will be this one, okay? A server authentication server and an API server. So the authentication server built with TMS Sphinx, and the API server using TMSX data. And in the example, we will use a desktop client built with Delphi and a web client using TMS WebCore. All this using our TMS BIS framework to create this ecosystem. But of course, you can extrapolate this example and use JSON Web Token in any, with any framework you have. Okay, here we have a demo application that shows in Delphi that shows uh, an API and the authentication server. There is here there, there are four projects. This one API server is the server for the API is the application server. Sphinx server is the authentication server. I went into the source code soon, but they are running here. This is the API music server. For example, if I try to copy to access the the API directly, it will say that it's unauthorized. And here is the authentication server. And then we have the desktop client that if I run here, I can say check login status and it says user is not logged in. And if I try to log in, it will open the default TMS Sphinx authentication login. And I say, I put the username here and the password. And then it logs in and I have the information for that specific user. If I do log out and login again with an, a different user. You see that the data is different. And the same for the web core application. Finally, this is the web client, which is a web application built with uh, TMS Web Core. And it's the same idea if I check, if I click check login status, user is not logging in. If I do login, it will be redirected to the login page. Of course, it's just an example here, I typed the wrong password. It will complains about the wrong password. And once we are logged in, the application will show that user is logged in, the email is for the user, the scope, the expiration. Remember I talked about the expiration and the ID token and the access token, which are, which are both JSON web token. If, for example, if I copy this access token and go to JOT.io and paste the token here, we will see some information here. Tenant ID Michael, client ID web, 
and you see that signature is invalid. And the same if I get the identity token. There is also information here, tenant ID, the email and some internal information and the signature is invalid. Only I need to know the signature to check if the, the, the token is valid. And the signature is here, the secret for the signature. Let me show you the API server source code. First, we have database utils and music entities units, which are just, we don't, we are, I'm not going to enter into this. It's just, a, it's used already as ORM to save data in the database. So this is just the classes use it to save data in the database. But what matters is here, it's the, we have some components here. The main, the important one is this Xdata server, which is our API server. And for the Exadata server, Exadata server, we have this JSWeb token tenant, uh, midware, sorry, which protects the API so it doesn't work without a JSWeb token midware. And here we pass the secret. So it, it will only accept JSONWeb tokens if the JSONWeb token is signed with this secret here, okay? And once it accepts the JSONWeb token and it accepts that the token is signed, then it can get information from the token to uh, set some data, for example, the tenant. What I mean is that the tenant, if we go here, the JSONWeb token, you have the tenant ID, Michael. That means that the application must, the API must filter out all the data belonging to Michael. And it can trust that information here. For example, I cannot generate a JSON web token with the name Hans, because if I change the Hans information here, trying to tamper the JSON web token and get Hans information, the server the API server will reject it because the signature will not match. Okay. And here is the API and here is the Sphinx server is the authentication server. Here we have the Sphinx server, which is a component for authentication server. And here is the URL of the Sphinx server and the Sphinx configuration. Basically, what you need to do here is there's no time to explain all the, the concepts here, but the Sphinx server is an OAuth server. So you just have to register the clients that will be using the authentication server. In this case, in this example here, we have two clients, the desktop application and the web application. So each works in a different way and each works with a different authentication mechanism. But this is this code here is mostly what you have to do to configure it. And also, again, we have to tell the server what is the secret that it will use to generate the JSON Web Token. So the Sphinx server, the authentication server is generating the JSON Web Token using this secret and the API is consuming that token and checking using the same secret. And finally, for the desktop client, we have this this form here, if you go to, we have the Sphinx login component that we go to check login status and it just checks if it's logged in. If it, if it is logged in, it logs user info, which is available in the tout results uh, object. And this tout result object here has the access token and the ID token, which is stored in memory. Basically, in the login button here, we just call sphinx1.login, sphinxlogin1.login, and this goes through all the process of opening the login page, and then the login page is the Sphinx Authenticator. It does the login process for you, uh, working with the existing registered users, and if the user logs in, it returns a JSON web token to the client. 
the Sphinx login component saves this web, JSON web token in memory, and that's how it can further use the token to process, to call the API, for example, uh, here. So here's the, here is an event that is called whenever a call is made to the API server. So all it, it needs to do is that if the user is logged in, or in other words, if the if there is authentication information in the component, then just send the access token in the authorization header request. So this is more or less the mechanism. There is not much time, but you can try this. This is a demo of TMS Sphinx component. You can download the trial version at tmssoftware.com website or bees.tmssoftware.com. You can download the trial version. And this is the demo that contains all these projects here. So you can try to run the demo and understand better how the authentication is done using JSON Web Token. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, just let us know. Uh, I really, I really like that TMS Spink stuff. I think it's very good. Uh, I think it does OAuth too, and a few other things as well. I think TMS have um, have collected together some good sort of um, components there for authentication. It's very interesting. Yeah, but I, but I, I never used to before the. Sphinx. It's new, actually. It's quite new. Yeah. It's only two months old, something like that. Yeah, it was released in August. It's something actually that uh, we developed for our own use, actually. That, that it started because it was a need for our own use, and then we turned it. It took a long time. It took maybe more than a year to turn it into a public library, but uh, we needed it because there was we didn't find something. That could do a, a central server. We need. We have a, an application here that we have to use a central authentication server like Auth0, for example, or Amazon Cognito or Identity Server. And we really need to to have uh, it multi-tenant and to create a SaaS actually. And so that's that's the origin of TMS Sphinx. I think I think people become more. Um sensitive to things like OAuth as well you know I think that's um, um, you know it's quite quite an important subject I think the days of just having plain passwords and passing data around that's not even encrypted I, I think uh, long gone yeah, you know? and another another good thing about OAuth is that in OpenID Connect is that it increases the interoperability of your application with the other applications because you can your client can log to a on out server written in another language or for another platform and at the same time if you have a OAuth server you can have other clients written in whatever language you have connecting authorization authorizing to your server as well so yeah i think i think the the sphinx controls make um jwt a, a lot easier i've used jwt in the past the hard way <laughs> and uh, and it is hard. <laughs> yeah, it sounds simple, but then when you start getting into it, it's actually more complicated than it looks. Um, when yeah. I looked at the Sphinx controls, they're actually pretty good. They do they do simplify the process a lot, which is good. And now it's based on the the JSON Web Token part. It's all based on the Paolo Rossi framework, which uh, I think yes. it became yeah. the the standard. Maybe it's the only, but it's not the only. It's the standard. It's the framework to use JSON Web Tokens with Delphi. So yeah. you don't need Sphinx to use JSON Web Tokens, just use Paolo Rossi framework and you, you will be good. I yeah. use that as well in my REST library. And the other option is a, a portion that I actually extracted from Marmot, that is a, another library. Mm -hmm. That That's uh, easy to use on, on the Windows side, but Jossie, uh it's actually, I think the only option for to go cross-platform, so even on Linux or uh, on the mobile platforms. Yeah, it relies on OpenSSL, so mm -hmm. that that's that's the thing. If you don't want to rely on OpenSSL, you can go on Marmot J JWT, and they basically uh, they are, are coded the, the the algorithm. So there's no need to, for OpenSSL to distribution. That's cool. it.